Warning, this content may be disturbing to some audiences. Subscribe. If you dare. I hitchhiked from Alexandria to Istanbul, through Jordan and Syria, before the Arab Spring. Syria was a beautiful and historically fascinating country, naturally fertile and prosperous, with delicious food and friendly people. Hey everybody, welcome to, an Ectost. People ask Reddit. Travelers of Reddit, where do you never want to go again? Number 1. Manila. I loved the other places I went in the Philippines, but Manila was awful. The air quality, the traffic, the garbage, and the weird proliferation of air-conditioned shopping malls. Most of all, the child poverty was heart-wrenching. A good wake-up call for a privileged Westerner, but not one I want again. Number 2. Freeport Bahamas. The beaches were very dirty and I just felt like I was in a shipyard. They also have a problem with feral dogs. They were everywhere. It broke my heart to see the skin and bone dogs. I guess so many of them starve to death they cannot keep up with the body pickups. I saw too many decaying dogs to count. Seriously would never go back. Although I did not enjoy going to Freeport it really made me realize how nice I have it here in the US. Another reason I didn't care for my trip was due to the fact that I was out there vacationing, sipping on martinis, while the locals were struggling to put food on the table. I saw where they lived and it really broke my heart. I felt very guilty knowing that my tourist ass wasn't assisting them really in any way. I'm not familiar with Bahamian tax laws and government-issued programs but I can't imagine that the tourist money goes back to the people. And I also really started upping my volunteer game especially with the Humane Society. Number 3. Commenter, Kuta Beach, Bali. Had such high expectations but there was just trash everywhere. I didn't have high expectations for Kuta specifically but Bali in general. I was also 15-ish at the time so I was not involved with the research at all as my parents planned and paid for it. I had only heard about Bali from people slash TV shows slash magazines slash social media and from there it seemed like paradise. Person B. Completely agree. It was quite horrible to add in the street vendors that would physically grab you and pull you into their store and I did not have a good experience. Other parts of Bali are beautiful. Person C. Yeah we briefly visited Kuta because my boyfriend wanted to see it. Told him to buckle up and that we'd regret it and sure enough we did. Only highlight was a man sitting by himself in the sand staring furiously at his buried legs. My mum's actually from the nearby East Java region of Banyuwangi so I spent a fair bit of my childhood in Bali and Kuta was trashy 20 odd years ago, let alone now. We wound up going to North and nor Northwest Bali which was pleasant however. Just a quiet resort surrounded by deer and monkeys chilling on the beach, then a bush trek to a jungle waterfall. I can't recall the name of the resort as it was one we booked over Airbnb, but it was a decent one and the staff were super friendly. It was a resort that could access Menjongan Island and was within the West Bali National Park. Number 4. Belize City. Belize was one of our stops for the cruise we were on. I always heard about how gorgeous Belize was, and I'm sure there are beautiful parts of Belize, but Belize City was an absolute shithole. They pretty much dropped a majority of white US citizens and thought it would be okay to let us roam a city that was torn by local civil war. The city was full of armed military guards standing at street corners and the city canals and streets were incredibly polluted. I live in Baltimore and have seen some bad neighborhoods, but Belize City seemed way worse than anything I've seen. Many stores had armed guards who would unlock the door to let you in and once you were inside, they would lock the door behind you. We didn't experience any issues with the or violence but it was the strangest feeling getting stared down from every angle. We stayed for about an hour and then decided it was time to get the F out. As we were leaving there were three people standing near the port. They looked at us and said welcome to the real world. Once we got back to the ship, we strolled past the lobby. There may have been four or five employees working the customer service desk. Each employee had a deep line and the chatter was all centered around angry complaints about dropping us off at Belize City. Needless to say, that same cruise line took Belize off their itinerary soon after. Number 5. Commenter. Greyhound Bus Station in Atlanta. I have never seen such an array of terrifying things happen in one small space. That place is a nightmare. Person B. I've been to and from that Greyhound station many times. First thing first, there is a prison a block away. All day long there are junkies hanging around trying to bum anything they can get off of you, cigarettes, cash, use of your phone, weed. 
There are red cops posted 24-7 but they are more focused on telling you that you can't smoke here and go to the smoking section than to try to keep the fiends at bay. The Greyhound staff don't give a damn about anything there and try to mess up your trip with wrong info or taking their time checking you in. Sometimes they will search your bags in person for drugs, weapons, etc. If you ever have to travel to this nightmare, don't take anything out of your pockets. People are watching and they will know if you've got smokes, cash, that sort of thing. Number 6. Gary, Indiana. Came off the exit immediately into a neighborhood that looked like it was hit with some natural disaster before and never recovered, but no they're just too broke to fix their roads or anything. We tried to cut through the neighborhood as fast as possible but the potholes made us not go over 25. We finally got to a gas station and the guy at the register said yeah you all should get out soon, it's about the time when they start robbing people. Advice taken, got the F out of there. Number 7. Commenter, Camden, New Jersey. We went to visit a friend there. He says that he can't wait to escape Camden, it's so ugly and dirty. Person B, as someone who lived in NJ for 12 years, I can say that here are three sections of NJ, North, Central, and South, and each has its own unique terrible city. North is Newark, Central is Trenton, and South is Camden. They're all equally and individually terrible. Person C, lived in a couple towns from Camden for a while, but went up to Newark for college. My dorm buddies were all scared of the ghettos across the street and would ask me to walk with them to the local liquor store. I'm not a scary guy, but I had no problems walking through Newark ghettos. Over the summer, one of the dorm buddies came to visit me down south. We're driving around at 2 a.m. and take a wrong turn and see a sign now entering Camden. I'm like, turn around. He goes why? Well, you know how I'm not afraid of Newark at all. Well, I'm terrified of Camden. Buddy promptly does a U-turn in the middle of the highway. Number 8. I don't imagine anyone has spent time in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea. It has the dubious honor of being in the world's top 5 most dangerous cities, plus the murders that happen there are generally way more random than hellish, drug-infused places like Honduras or Guatemala. Port Moresby is interesting as well since there is a high probability that, not only will you be killed mercilessly, but you will be eaten as well. I spent a week there one night. Number 9. Hollywood Boulevard. It's almost dystopian-like. Last I went there was just a homeless guy lying on the ground looking totally dead inside as a speaker above him blasted one way or another. And there was a drunk person in a really dirty Minnie Mouse costume stumbling by, tourists everywhere as if it's no big deal that there are poor people suffering everywhere in this spot that's portrayed as this glamorous, illustrious place on TV. We left after 5 minutes, or tried to, there were crowds of tourists everywhere. Number 10. Zimbabwe. Went there to see Victoria Falls. Stayed at the Victoria Falls Hotel to be within walking distance. Everywhere, people were just standing around with just two or three carved trinkets they were trying to sell. There were absolutely no buyers. Looked like something out of a Twilight Zone show. First thing they asked when you got close to them is if you'd sell them your shoes. No kidding, every single one. Number 11. East St. Louis. I was meeting a colleague for dinner at a Mexican restaurant in a not terrible part of East Street, Louis. Unfortunately, Apple Maps took me into a desolate neighborhood with gigantic potholes in the streets and empty lots interspersed with abandoned houses on either side. Thankfully, it was a 90 degrees Fahrenheit July afternoon and no one was out and about. I stopped in the middle of one street, looked around, saw no one, and entered the same address into Google Maps. This time it took me to the restaurant. Number 12. Yakima, Washington. They might call it the Palm Springs of Washington or Yakka Vegas, but it's an absolute shithole. Highest rate of carjacking in the country and rife with violent crime. I had a friend that went there for a soccer match when he was in high school, and the match was cancelled because one of the kids on the other team was a gang member and some shitheads drove by and shot at the players on the field. Luckily nobody was hurt, but gives you an idea of what sort of special shithole Yakima is. That said, the Yakima Valley makes some amazing fruit and hops. If you've ever had a Washington apple or a craft beer from anywhere in the US, there's a very high chance that the apple or the hops came from the Yakima Valley. Number 13. Definitely the UAE slash Dubai. While flying home from a business trip about a year ago, I was pulled aside at security, forced to remove all my clothing, given a ridiculously intimate and degrading strip search, including spreading over and bending spreading my ass cheeks and having to retract my foreskin. Forced to stand naked while my belongings were searched and my tattoos were photographed, 
and then interrogated for over an hour while they looked through my phone, computer and other belongings. I missed my flight and wasn't even given a reason for the search. Luckily I haven't been back and I never will. Number 14. Commenter. The airport of Moscow. Boy, that place was bad. The bathroom smelled like smoke everywhere, staff was unfriendly and the gates changed all the time. Maybe it was just a bad day, but geez that place was unorganized. Person B. I had a stopover in Moscow for like 12 hours. I could not leave the airport, and so I thought I could just have a little sleep close to where the duty-free area is. Oh boy I was wrong, I got kicked in the leg by a woman wearing some type of military slash police uniform. Holding an AK variant asking me something in Russian, drowsy and a little shocked by what just happened I answered in English. Her counterpart then said in the most harsh English ever don't sleep here. I said sorry, and walked to my gate trying to stay awake. Number 15. Weirton, West Virginia. I went there for work a few times. It's an old, mostly abandoned steel town. It was a happening place 30 plus years ago, but now it's all run down and gray and cloudy almost every day. I drive the 25 minutes to stay in Robinson nearby Pittsburgh just so that I didn't have to stay there overnight. Our department literally had rules regarding how long you were allowed to work at that plant before you had to come back home or go somewhere else. We'd lost a couple good engineers to that place. Number 16. Syria. I hitchhiked from Alexandria to Istanbul, through Jordan and Syria, before the Arab Spring. Syria was a beautiful and historically fascinating country, naturally fertile and prosperous, with delicious food and friendly people. But it was backward, closed-minded, poor and seedy because of a corrupt, paranoid authoritarian government. Now it's a war zone and a humanitarian disaster, which is far, far, worse. Number 17. Kajaraho, India. It's most famous for its intricately sculpted temples, some of which depict sexual acts. I traveled through India alone for months and, as an obviously foreign woman, I got the expected unwanted attention. But Kajaraho was different. It was non-stop harassment everywhere I went and the men always became aggressive when I ignored slash politely declined their advances. I was having such a horrible time that I decided to just go back to the hotel where a man in the lobby wanted to have dinner with me and I again declined. The lady at the desk must have given him my room number because he called my phone until I disconnected it and then started pounding on my door and telling me to let him in. It was truly horrible. Make sure to share your personal story in the comments below and have the opportunity to be featured in a future video. Also, if you like these topics don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to continue seeing more content like this every day. See you next time.